Hey everyone, Lars here, back with more new cards from for the Mask of Change set coming out uh, later in April here for Japan that will be combined into our Twilight Masquerade set um, in the next month or so. So let's just get into the cards. So here we have a Varum, HP 70 basic for one colorless metal coating, attach a basic metal energy from your discard pile to this Pokemon. For one metal, two colorless, ram 50 damage. Um, two retreat cost, weakness fire, resistance grass. That's a basic. Uh, it doesn't really do anything that special. Um, you have to just, you have to attach energy to this card. Not really that amazing. And two retreat is not very good to have for a basic. Either it is buddy pop and searchable though. So if there ever is a river room, the room thing, maybe you want to use this version. Probably not. But uh, let's go ahead and move on to the next one. Uh, Reverum, Metal, HP 140, Stage 1, Evolves from Verum. Uh, for one colorless, Rally Back, 30 plus damage. If any of your Pokemon were knocked out by damage from an attack from your opponent's Pokemon during their last turn, this attack does 90 more damage. Um, <clears throat> metal, colorless, colorless, Running Charge, 100 times damage. Flip a coin until you get Tails. This attack does 100 damage for each heads. Okay, so... Um, Another two retreat costs as well. So Rally Back is 120 damage as a retaliation for a single colorless. On a stage one, that's kind of rough. Uh, you have the basic Zamazenta that does the same attack as a base of 100 and a retaliation of 120. So just a better attack. Of course, it requires three energy, but in metal, you know, you can have that as a secondary attacker with like Matangs and whatnot pretty easily. So. This is not worth running over as Amazenta. Uh, for maybe pre-release type stuff, uh, or like limited, if you just get these cards, a 1 energy, 120 retaliation kill. Uh, that might not be bad, especially because it's colorless. You can splash it into whatever setup you're doing. So pre-release card, pretty much. That's all I'm really seeing for this one. Uh, the 3 energy, like flip a coin damage, 100 for each heads. Uh, I mean, that's a lot of damage, but... That's coin flips, so this could hit for zero, this could hit for 600, you know. This could hit for 1,138,000 something damage, but you gotta flip a coin that many times and get nothing but heads the whole way through, so. Uh, I think it's just, it's too unreliable of, a, of an attack. Again, pre-release, fine card probably to slot in with your deck, because the one colorless attack, so. Pretty much all, all I would say for that card. Uh, and then we have one more for this one, then we have another card to cover. Uh, this is Farfetch'd. Uh, HP 70, basic Pokemon ability, Sonic Duty. When you play this Pokemon from your hand onto your bench, during your turn, you may search your deck for a Pokemon tool card and attach it to this Pokemon, then shuffle your deck. One colorless mock cut, 30 damage, discard a special energy from your opponent's active Pokemon. Res uh, retreat one. Okay, so this card is a TM slave, kind of. You can play this from your hand on your bench, go search your deck for a TM, attach it to Farfetch'd, and then you can like gen ener jet energy it into the active, and then you could go ahead and TM evolution your Pokemon if you want to. Uh, you can use this for a TM de-evolution play, turbo energize even if you want to play that way, play that one. Um, all in all, not that good of a card, but there are things you can do, and maybe later on down the line there's more Pokemon Tool cards that come out that could work with this card very well. Uh, you can even slot this into the Rotom V um, and V-Star TM tool discard thing where you just hitch a bunch of TMs to the discard pile, then Rotom V to attack and send them to the Lost Zone. To get yourself a uh, a big old whopping attack, but uh, ultimately I don't think it's necessary for that deck and whatnot. But what I do think is interesting about this card is that there is an evolution for Farfetch'd in Surfetch'd. So if we do get a Surfetch'd down the line that does have like good stat lines, good attack then what we can do is we can use this to go search a tool that we want to pair with the Surfetched, such as like a um, like a Hero's Cape or a Rigid Band or 
um, a defiance belt, or w what have you. You know, any kind of tool that you might want to use on your Surfetched, you can go ahead and get with this card. And then when you evolve it on your next turn, cool, there's your Surfetched. And it's powered up by whatever tool you have. Um, it also helps thin the deck by one because, you know, you just play this out from your hand. Um, and then, boom, a tool comes out of your deck. It uh, thins you out a little bit. But for now, we don't really have much to play with, with this card. If we get a Surfetch down the line that helps um, and is, is a good card, then sure, maybe. But for now, it's pretty much um, nothing. It's a TM Slave at best. And uh, <clears throat> we have one more card to talk about. And that card was revealed today. It is the Jamming Tower Stadium card. Now, this card is pretty powerful. So, stadium cards are notoriously hard to get rid of. You know, you have to bump it with your own stadium, or you have to Lost Vacuum it. Path to the Peak was such a powerful card in the previous set because of the fact that you had to have some way to bump it out, and searching stadiums is hard, and searching items like the Lost Vacuum, which need to be used, you know, you only really run one or two most of the time. They ran more before to deal with more Path of the Peaks. This will become a problematic card in some ways, too. Not as powerful as Path of the Peak, but still a card to be wary of, especially for certain decks. So what is this card? Jamming Tower. Stadium. Pokemon tools attached to Pokemon to play, both yours and your opponent's, have no effect. So, Hero's Cape, Maximum Belt, or a Seal Stone, all of the TMs, Rescue Board, Bravery Charms, Lux uh, Luxurious Capes, so Snorlax Stall, Guard of War, um, any deck wanting to cape up their Charizard or any of their big plays, so a control list wanting to throw a cape down to protect their Pidgeot EX better. Um, any deck wanting to play TM Evolution, any deck um, wanting to avoid getting TM Devolution can play this. There are so many different tool cards right now, specifically because of the TMs as well, and these new A-Spec tools that just get completely shut off by this. Uh, we saw in the last, uh, we saw before a rotation that um, Tool Jammer was used in some decks just to offset uh, certain things like uh, the Bravery Charms on the Maridons and the Raikos and stuff. So, this is going to be a stadium that is going to cause problems for some decks, for sure. And it's going to definitely cause problems for anyone wanting to run A-Spec tools. Uh, A-Spec tools get hit really hard by this, because you have to have a way to bump it off. But it is a, especially with Heroescape, it is a proactive stadium for anyone trying to deal with a, a tool like that, where you just have to play it down and your opponent loses the 100 HP on their Heroescape, and then you can just go in and attack. And so this card is going to cause some issues for certain decks, for sure. Heroescape may not even be touched much after this comes out, and Gardevoir is going to struggle if anyone's running this card, because their whole game plan revolves around Bravery Charms, Luxurious Capes, Heroes Capes, any of these like tool cards to enhance HP to bring their Scream Tails and their Drift Loons up to a reasonable level to get damage. And if all you have to do is play <clears throat> this stadium and watch them lose like two or three of their Pokemon immediately because their uh, tools got disabled, then that's going to hurt the deck even more. So this is definitely a card that is going to cause problems for specific decks. And uh, it's going to um, definitely make any A-Spec tools currently and printed in the next couple sets, if there are more to come. And I know there's at least one more to come. It's going to make them less and less um, likely to be played over Prime Catchers and whatnot. Because why play, why play this tool that's just going to get shut off by a stadium when you could just play a Prime Catcher instead? Um, so yeah, 
we'll just have to wait and see on this one, but I foresee this card being problematic for uh, quite a few lists and some strategies that we're currently seeing. So be on the lookout for that. And uh, if you're playing any of these decks that require tools, yeah, who knows? You know, it could it could be very problematic for you going forward. But we'll, we'll have to just wait and see on that and see how uh, good this is. So, yeah, that'll be it for for this uh, little segment of the video. Um, or that'll be it for this video. So thanks, everybody, for watching. If you like this content, please like and subscribe. And uh, check out the other videos on the channel. Have a good day, and I'll see you later.